Mike Cannon-Brooks, welcome to the business. Thanks for having me. Mike, you need to win over shareholders to block the demerger. How will you do that and what case will you argue? Look, I'm putting forward a pretty clear case for the positivity I feel. Uh, as a shareholder, I feel like AGL has a very bright future. As a company, given its assets, both um, uh, grid and, and generation assets, its talent assets, et cetera. However, I think the demerger is a very flawed strategy. I think it's, it's globally irresponsible. I think it is a very poor outcome for shareholders, and I'll be making that case. I think it's a very poor outcome for the workers and employees of AGL and a poor outcome for Australia and, and the government ultimately. Well, as you've just said there, you've described this demerger plan as globally irresponsible and flawed and that it risks a terrible outcome for shareholders. But the AGL board, which is committed to the demerger deal, says the deal will ensure the value created through Australia's energy transition stays with shareholders. So who are shareholders to believe? Uh, well, uh, I think I own somewhere north of 11% and the board owns somewhere close of 0.02%. So uh, maybe that's some choice. Secondly, this is a board that's presided over a 70% decrease in shareholder value over the last five years. So uh, as uh, they haven't exactly covered themselves in glory, I'm quite happy to put my ideas into the theatre of ideas and have them spot upon. Um, but uh, I certainly don't believe their demerger plans, no. The Energy Minister, Angus Taylor, has repeatedly said that the early closure of coal-fired power stations will drive up prices. If the demerger doesn't go ahead, can you guarantee that your plan won't push electricity prices up? Quite the opposite. I think the demerger plan will push energy prices up. I think it will increase grid instability. Uh, we've seen that just in the last few weeks. As the price of coal and gas have risen, everyone's bills have started to go up. Uh, and fossil fuel generating assets are more and more and more expensive continually. Secondly, we've seen Loyang A, a second unit is now out, right? And so the company has had a roughly $100 million write down in profits or announcement of, and uh, in a demerged state, it would be harder to keep the reliability of those assets going in the long term. So I, I think the demerger would result in higher prices and less grid stability. So why does keeping AGL as one company make it more resilient and able to reduce emissions faster? Um, well, it's certainly able to manage the transition. So uh, uh, these plants are going to close. Everyone agrees on that. question is how fast and what we build is replacement capacity for those. Um, some part of that is related to the company's access to financing, access to talent. As a single larger entity, it has a much greater chance of having access to that financing at a lower rate. So it can manage that transition uh, uh, better. Um, secondly, uh, the assets that are being split up here have some sense significant sense to be together. For example, the plants themselves have significant grid access, which is needed if you're going to build out large scale renewable storage facilities, uh, which are going to manage the huge influx of renewables that we already have coming into the grid uh, in New South Wales and Victoria. Do you think, Mike, it's easier now for you to achieve your goals as AGL's largest shareholder, just over 11%, rather than going down the takeover path of previous months, given the issues around the FERB potentially blocking that deal in the national interest? No, I don't think FERB would have been an issue for that deal. Uh, I don't think it would have been a thing. I think it would have been, we could have achieved a better outcome through that option, but the board is very clear they did not wish to meaningfully engage and that that was not an option. So we uh, went back to the drawing board and came back. There's a very different uh, approach to the company. We're saying, well, we're going to have to keep it together and solve the problem together with you. Um, what we have done is put ourselves on the block. As a larger shareholder, we stand to benefit or lose alongside the shareholders. Um, and it's a, it's a clear investment. Um, that's very different. But the access to capital will be less in the demerged entity than in the current combined entity. It would have been better if we had gone private because I think the access to capital would have been even better still. So does that mean you won't try again with the takeover bid? All I'm focused on at the moment is preventing the demerger, which I think is, is critically forward and a horrible option for all the stakeholders. Um, that, that's the first step. The board has clearly put that up as the choice before shareholders, and I'm trying to make sure that shareholders understand there are multiple choices here. And finally, Mike, with the election campaign in full swing, we know there are many independents who are campaigning, particularly on climate. How big a threat are they for the incumbents? Well, oh, that's a totally different question to the AGLD merger. Um, look, I, I think they uh, have a lot of views that I agree with in different spots. I think what's interesting is that uh, uh, living kind of in two electorates with two different independents running and challenging the incumbent, they have actually quite different views. Um, I think their, their views on climate in general and integrity in government are very important. I think they are, are challenging in those areas. Um, I think this is what political discourse takes, is lots of different views and people to make their choices with their votes. Um, it, same thing happening in the independents and those electorates. 
as is happening in, uh, in the AGL case. So hopefully a, a thoughtful discussion and then people making informed choices. Mike Cannon-Brooks, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.